The following video is going to be repurposed and uploaded audio only for my podcast. If you're somebody who enjoys listening to content audio, then click the link down in the description and you're going to get a choice of various podcast platforms. Places like Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora Music, Amazon Music, and Audible. Thank you so much and enjoy this episode. Welcome back to another episode of Abundant Thinking. Today we're going to be talking about three ways to stay disciplined long term. I've made videos in the past and I've made a lot of points on discipline and how to stay disciplined, but I think it's very important to not only be able to be disciplined, but stay disciplined for a long time because anybody can be disciplined for a shorter period of time. I personally think that's called motivation, but if you're able to stay disciplined, you're going to get so much more done than you can imagine. So number one, and honestly, my mental framework around long-term discipline is mostly used by this one point it's thinking about the future version of yourself so if you don't stay disciplined being able to look at yourself into the future and compare yourself to how you would be if you did do the thing versus if you didn't for example say that you wanted to start something right and we'll say chess for this example you want to start playing chess but it's something that you weren't necessarily you know sure about whatever but it's something that you want to try right so you told yourself i am going to play chess every single day for six months right i want you guys to envision what would happen if you did do the thing versus if you didn't here's a very simple framework so if you did do the thing think about how it would affect you how the experiences would lead you to have new beliefs versus if you never did the thing how you would stay stagnant and at the same place you are Now, I want to make it very clear that this isn't about failing or succeeding. When you do something, when you try something, when you stay disciplined, the biggest premise, and I also think the biggest misconception to add on to that, is the fact that people always think you need to have an outcome. And they don't realize that outcomes come without them actually realizing they're there. For example, somebody's going to think, okay, I'm going to stay disciplined and play chess for six months every single day, you know, one hour, whatever the time frame is. And they say... Okay, well, my goal is I want to hit, I don't really know the ranks too well, right? But like pretend they want to get to the point where they're a thousand rating, right? I, I think that's how chess works. <laughs> um, I was never good at chess, so don't don't ask me these things. <laughs> but so, okay, so they want to hit a thousand rating, right? And, you know, imagining yourself, okay, imagine you started that thing, right? You hit a thousand rating, you did it, you stayed disciplined. How much will it help you in the future? Not only will it, you know, boost you and start you into the world of chess, because chances are if you're gonna play it every day for, you know, a day straight, you're gonna keep going, especially like for six months. It's gonna be something you like to do, right? And something that you're gonna enjoy to do. Plus, you get that reinforcement because oh I hit a thousand. That was my goal. That's awesome. Compared to the flip side, right? If you think about it, okay, I never start the thing. First of all, if you wanted to start playing chess, but you didn't know if it was for you, you'd still not know. That's one of the biggest things, guys, I need you to understand is the fact that a lot of people don't try new things just because they think that, you know, they're not going to be good at it or whatever. But the biggest thing about it is when you start something new, you figure out if it's for you or not, especially the fact that good things take a lot longer than you think. You can't play chess every single day for three days straight and then decide if chess is for you or if you're going to be good at it because the reality is it's going to take longer than you think to actually get good at the thing that you want to be great at right so in other words you might figure out that okay chess is kind of fun or i'm not good at chess but the thing with that is how would you know if you're good or bad at something if you've only been doing it for three days, right? Some people have been playing for years, tens of years, like so many people have been playing for so long and you can't decide if something is for you or not by just doing it one time. That's why if you consistently play chess, you consistently do whatever that thing is, you can make an informed judgment about whether that thing is for you if you do it for long enough. Although I think that there are things that you might be able to do and just think, oh my God, I hate this. Then you stop that, right? Don't No, you don't want sunk cost fallacy. You don't want to think that, okay, I've already put so much time, might as well keep going. But you need to understand that this thing that you are doing is helping shape you, right? Because here's the thing. I talked about this in one of my first episodes on, you know, trying new things. The fact that if you try something new, you are going to know if it's for you or not. It's as simple as that. Plus, you have so many cool stories. You become more of an interesting person once you have all those things to back yourself up. Right, I talked about on one of my episodes, one of my really good friends, Roman, shout out Roman if you're listening to this, but 
he's done everything. I swear. Like I'll have a conversation with him. I'll bring up something random. I'll talk about, you know, mountain climbing. He'll be like, Oh yeah, I remember when I did that. It, it was a good time. I'm like, how do you know these things? Because he's tried so many different things. And that's what I want to drill into your guys' head. Now, shifting back to the discipline side of this is the fact that you're not going to know if you don't try. You're not going to know something's for you or not. And you're not going to know how much better you'll become at that thing if you never try it, right? Thinking about the future version of yourself. This helps me so much because I'm always trying to improve. Chances are, if you're watching this video or listening to this on audio, you want to improve as well. So the thing is, when you look at yourself three years into the future or a year into the future and you realize that you've stayed stagnant and didn't start that thing you wanted to, even if it's six months, even if it's three months, you're going to know that you're going to stay in the same place and you're not going to improve. You're not going to change at all. I remember one of my long-term goals for, I mean, it's still happening now. It was, okay, I want to do MMA and I want to do it for a while and see how I like it. I will tell you, the first month of doing jujitsu was horrible. It was terrible. I was getting beat every time, right? It, it, was, it was a terrible experience, guys. I'm going to be completely honest. Good exercise, right? It's good to go up against other people. But for the first month, you're getting killed. Now, after that time passes, and for those of you guys that do uh, combat sports, you know that there is a threshold and there is a time that you have to pass to where you get to the point where you can start beating other people. For the time being, when you start, you got to keep getting your ass whooped, right? You got to keep going in there. You got to keep, you know, that's just how it is. But if you were to be somebody who would stop one month before, you would think, oh, this is not for me. This sucks. You know, I can't do that, whatever. And you would think that that's something that you hate, which is exactly how I thought. But then fast forward months into the future, I'm loving it so much because I'm getting better and I'm getting that reinforcement that, okay, I'm getting better. I'm starting to beat people. And I wouldn't know how to do that if I didn't stay disciplined to it long term. One of the ways to stay disciplined is commit yourself. You have to know with absolute certainty that you're going to be able to do this. And how do you do that? This is going to lead me to my second point, which is start getting disciplined on a shorter time frame. It's almost impossible to say to yourself, okay, from no experience, mind you, to be like, okay, well, for the next year, I'm going to do this thing, right? If you have no proof that you're able to do anything similar or just commit yourself to something, you're never going to be able to do that thing. Right, the same thing I talk about with confidence. You have to have proof within yourself that you can do the things that you say you can. You need to be able to tell yourself you can do this thing and know it's true because of your previous experiences. Now, shifting this to the discipline side, how can we do this? Very simple. Start short term. Right? Things like a couple of days. Okay, well, I want to play chess. Start by playing chess one hour every day for seven days. Or start by playing chess one hour every day for three to five days. It doesn't have to be long. And honestly, it doesn't need to be one hour every day. It could be, all right, 10 minutes every day because the whole point is the consistency. Once you're able to do it, you keep doing it. That's how you stay disciplined. It's like, okay, this is something I have to do. A good example of this is I post every single day on social media. I've been doing it for the past, I would say four and a half months. Every single day, one post at least, right? Some days have been more. But the thing is, I had to start very, very early and I had to tell myself this is something I can do. There's no way four and a half months ago I could look at it and be like, I'm going to upload every single day for the next blah, 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 whatever. I don't have a time frame. I just upload every day. But after, you know, a couple weeks, after a couple days in a row, after a couple weeks, I started to think, okay, this is something I can do, right? I had that proof within myself. I've already done this thing. I've already been uploading one post a day, every day for a couple weeks. And at that point I was like, this is something I can keep doing, right? Now, fast forward, it's four and a half months. I know right? I know this is something I'm going to keep doing. One of the hard things about this and one of the caveats to, I guess, understanding yourself is knowing that once you know what you can do, you set really high standards for yourself, right? I know this is something that I'm going to have to do for a good amount of time, post every single day, and I know it's something that I can do. So if there was ever a day that I didn't do that, I would disappoint myself. And then that would start a very bad cycle. But the way to not have that happen right? It's post every day. But before that happens is have that discipline. It's like, I have to do this, right? It's not like I get a choice. Okay. I have to either post or I go hang out with my friends. It's like, no, I have to post, right? So having that short-term discipline builds proof within yourself. It shows you that you're able to achieve the things that you said you did because you've done them before. 
I hope that made sense for you guys. But so very important is kind of starting it off, right? Start it off by saying, okay, if I do this thing, how would it help me in the future? If we're going to say clean slate, right? I never started MMA, mixed martial arts, for those of you guys that don't know. So combat sports. And I say to myself, okay, I'm going to do this thing for six months and see how it would help me. Pretend I already have a little bit of proof. I'm able to do discipline. I'm able to discipline myself. And to add on to that, so the short-term discipline doesn't have to be in the same field. I want you guys to understand that. It's not like if I'm able to do this thing for a little bit of time, I'm able to do the same thing for a longer period of time because that's already true. But if you're already able to stay disciplined uh, in one area, you'll be able to be disciplined in another area because guess what? You have the experience from one area that will directly transfer to the other one. Right, So if every single day you go to jiu-jitsu and you're disciplined this way and you've been doing it for a while, then what makes you think every day you can't post a YouTube video? Every day you can't run five miles. You can't work out, right? Because the thing is, you already have that proof, like I mentioned. So start off, if in six months, this is how I think, six months I am doing jiu-jitsu, how would it help me? I think it would help my confidence. It would show me that I'm able to do the thing that I want to. Let's be real here. You guys know what you want, whether you want to admit it or not. So whether you're going to be disciplined or not is your choice, but you're always going to have to live with the feeling of the fact that you never did that thing, which is something that I wouldn't wish my worst enemy on, right? You don't want to always think, what if I started that thing? Because that's why I'm telling you guys just to bring it back. That's why you want to start it because you never want to be the person that has regrets, right? You, you need to be able to choose the regrets that you can live with rather than the ones that you can't live without. You don't get to have no regrets, but you get to choose which regrets you will have. So if you think to yourself, okay, I need to post today, right? I, I need to post my, my YouTube video, right? That's your goal. And you think to yourself, okay, I have two hours to post this video. I either A, post this YouTube video or B, hang out with my friends. Well, you have to choose your regret. Right? You're going to post your YouTube video and you're going to you know, regret not hanging out with your friends. But guess what? You posted that YouTube video. And on the other side, if you want to hang out with your friends instead of posting that YouTube video, you're going to live with the regret that not only did you not do the thing you said you would, but it's going to hinder you in the future because you're going to have that thought in the back of your mind. Oh, I didn't do that thing. So what makes me think I can do it again? And that's where I think a lot of people get caught because they think to themselves, well, who am I? They have imposter syndrome. Who am I to do this thing? Who am I to run five miles every day? You're nobody until you start to become somebody in the short term. You go from short term to you go from nothing to short term, then short term to long term. You don't just go from nothing to long term. That's very difficult. Some of you may be able to do it, but start short term because that's where it starts. You know, instead of promising yourself, okay, I will play chess every day for the next six months, say, I'll play chess every day for the next week. And then after a week, one more week. And after that week passes, okay, I'll play every day for the next month. And then it goes long and long. And then, you know, it gets longer and longer. And that's how you build the resilience, to be honest. So start with that. Think about the future version of you. Think about short term. And then the third one, which I think is super important. Thank you guys if you're still here for being with me. Set up the environment to succeed. This is huge. Let me explain. If you want to be disciplined, do not be around other people who aren't disciplined. Now listen, I know this is the cliche, you're the sum of the five people you hang out with, which I do agree with, but everybody talks about it. It's a very basic tip, right? You don't want to be surrounded by those people, but here's the thing. Us humans conform all the time. It is so easy for us to look at what other people are doing and then do that thing because it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to get judged for it, right? It's like, it fits within people's category of normal. Not saying that the thing that you want to be disciplined in is not going to fit in that category, but the thing is when people see other people who aren't doing as good as them, they're going to be like, oh, why is that guy doing that? Or they're going to poke fun at him, right? Just because you're doing something that other people don't approve of, as long as it's not like killing somebody, (laughs) is not a problem. And that's what you guys need to understand. So it's a lot easier to put yourself to be successful when you put yourself in that successful place, right? Pick a couple of friends, like maybe get some accountability buddies. Something I got to work on is telling people what I have planned, you know, my goals so they can keep me up to date and actually show that they care about me. (laughs) But you want to be surrounded by people who have done the thing, people who want to do the thing, et cetera. And more importantly is to set yourself up in the environment, like I said, to do the thing. So let's say you want to play chess every single day for an hour. 
well, what if you locked yourself in a room every single day for one hour and said to yourself, okay, I either play chess for an hour or when I don't want to play chess and I'm bored, I can just sit there and do nothing, right? This is huge, guys. This is like a secret trick. This is absolutely giant. And you guys need to understand this. There are two ways around this. I'm, you know, I'm just going to reveal the sauce really quickly. <laughs> but you need to put yourself in the situation to succeed. And the way you do this is A, put a time frame. So say, okay, I have to study for two hours, right? I can either A, sit in a room and do nothing, right? You don't have you don't have another choice. Do nothing for two hours, just sit there or you can study. It gets to the point where you're so overstimulated by social media, by music, by everything around you that when you do the homework, of course it's gonna be hard. Of course it's gonna be like, oh my God, I don't wanna do this thing because you can just keep scrolling on TikTok all day. But when you set your baseline lower and you make the baseline, okay, I can sit and do nothing, that's super boring. So doing homework or studying is more exciting than, you know, sitting there and doing nothing. And guess what? Sometimes I'll, I'll do this for myself and I'll sit there and I'll look at the wall. But there will come a time, I guarantee you, unless you're like a monk, <laughs> which if you're watching this as a monk, please let me know. That's awesome. It, unless you're a monk, there is going to come a time where you're going to be like, okay, this is kind of boring. I'm just going to do my work, right? I have nothing else to do. So it's either time or objective based. So it's like either A, I sit in the room for two hours or I either finish this two page paper or I just keep sitting here forever, right? So it's like, I got to get the thing done. And this is so important because when you combine these things, all the three I just talked about, you know, imagining future version of yourself, then short term and then putting yourself in the environment, you're going to be unstoppable. Something to add on to this is also inversion thinking. This is gonna be my like extra bonus, honorable mention, if you will. Inversion thinking is kind of what I talked about with the future version of yourself, you know, thinking about yourself badly. But instead of thinking, okay, I want to, you know, how, instead of thinking, how will I be disciplined for six months? Think about, instead of, sorry, my apologies. Instead of thinking, what do I have to do to stay disciplined for six months? You know, like hard work, um, prioritize it think about yourself think to yourself what do i have to do to make sure i don't stay disciplined to make sure i fail instantly as humans we're really good at finding the negatives whether you guys want to admit it or not so when you reframe it like that what are different ways that i'm able to not be disciplined and make sure i fail you're going to start getting a bunch of lists a huge list of a bunch of different things and you're going to see okay what do i have to do to make sure i fail not doing the thing right super obvious um not prioritizing it not even having it on your to-do list, not thinking about it. So then you take those points and flip it. So instead of not having it on your to-do list, it's having it on my to-do list to make sure I succeed. So if you guys understand how that works, I do have an episode on inversion thinking. So check that one out below as well. But yeah, the biggest things to stay disciplined long-term is first, right? Is thinking about yourself in the future. How will this impact you? Because this is, this is giant. We all strive for change. And if you know that you're going to do something that's not going to help you in the future, chances are you're not going to want to do it, right? You're not going to, one of your goals to stay disciplined isn't going to be, okay, I want to stand on a floor for 30 minutes every day and do nothing unless you're meditating or something, right? But it's going to be something that serves you in a way. Chess, I want to get smarter. I want to learn this thing that my friends are really good at. MMA, I want to learn how to defend myself. Workout, I want to get healthier. I want to improve my you know, discipline, obviously. I want to be more resilient. All of those things, they serve you in a way. So find out how this thing serves you and you can figure it out from there. And the second thing is starting it short term. Don't try to work out for a year straight and then quit on your first day. I will also mention that this is why so many people on New Year's don't work out because they, they wait. Well, I will say somebody who has to wait till the day of something to start that thing needs a little bit of a push, right? You don't want to be the person that's like, okay, I'm going to start like... Next week is the week. It's just started. If you just started, it makes everything so much easier, so much less limbic friction. It's it's so much better. But those people are like, okay, this is the year I start working out. Well, when they frame it like that, this is the year. Don't think about the year. Say this is the day, right? Which obviously we just said you don't want it today. You want to start now. But you know it's better than saying for a whole year. But saying, okay, today I start and I'm going to go today. And then I'm going to go tomorrow. I'm not going to go for the next year because that sounds so intimidating. 365 days straight of working out is tough for somebody who doesn't work out, right? So thinking about how how you you know frame it, so starting short term as well, and then putting yourself in the environment. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a framework, right? How if I was somebody who did this, how I would do it. I'm gonna think about something random. Okay, I'm gonna say I wanna be somebody 
who wants to run two miles every day. I used to run two miles every day, but so that's why I'm saying this. I want to be somebody who runs two miles every day. First thing, two miles every day, right? We're going to say for six months, just for now. I know we're going to talk about short term, but I want the goal is six months. So first you start, okay, in six months, how will this help me? I'm going to be healthier. I'm going to feel a lot better. I'm going to prove to myself. I've always been scared of running. I'm going to prove to myself this is something that I can do. True story, by the way. I never thought I could run two miles. And then one day I just did it in 18 minutes. And then that was it. All that time that I spent. You guys can do more than you can imagine. Just so you know. Okay. I'm going to be healthier, right? I'm going to be more disciplined. I'm going to prove to myself that I can do this thing. I don't want to have that long-term regret. Then second. Okay, let's start short-term. I want to do this thing for six months, but let's bunch it up. First, let me let me see if I can do this for seven days straight. Let me see if I can do it for three days straight. Let me see if I can do it for just one day. Just one day. Build that proof within yourself that you're able to achieve the things that you said you could. Build that proof and it gets easier. For somebody like David Goggins, right? He always pushes himself, but he knows that he can do the thing because he's done it time and time again. How many ultra marathons has he ran? He's ran so many. How many times has he done a workout? You know what I mean? It's just, it's second nature to him at this point because he's done it so many times. And the last thing is putting yourself in the environment, even inversion thinking. What do I have to do to make sure that I don't run two miles every day? Sit on the couch. Don't think about it. This is off the top of my head. Obviously, I can think of a huge list, but you know, sit on the couch. Obviously, don't go outside. Don't put myself in a place that I would want to run. Don't go to a park because a park is a really nice place to run, right? Maybe, you know, all those different things. Even like environment, like surround yourself with really people that don't like to do that thing. Then you're never going to do it. And now flip it on its head, right? You, you have the list of things that you should do in order to achieve it. But putting yourself in the optimal environment. If you join a run club, right? All you have to do, this is a kind of funny, it's something I talk about. If you join a fun, uh Sorry, Fike, what am I talking about? If you join a run club and you just go there, right? What are the chances you're going to run? It's pretty high, <laughs> right? If you're going to go to a, a, a running club and you're going to see everybody around you, they're going to inspire you. That's how that works, right? And so a fun example I said to my mom the other day is I might be going to India, right? Uh, flying, fl- not flying to plane, but, you know, taking a plane there 20 hours. And my mom was like, Oh my God, how can you even, like 20 hours is crazy. How can you do that? And I told her, all I have to do is get on the plane, right? Just get on the plane. That's it. Cause then I have no choice. Like what other choice do I have? I have to like survive. Same thing for this. It's like, if you go to a run club, just, you know, go in there, meet some people. What other choice do you really have? You can leave, but that's going to make it worse. You know, if you build a little bit of that short term discipline, or even if you go there the first time, to be honest, you know, it's like, okay. These people I like, they're surrounded by me. And you could always ask them questions. That's how I started in MMA. I was asking people so many questions. I was such a, I was a new guy and eventually got to the point where they answered the questions and I was like, okay, you know, this is, this isn't that bad. And then you just run, right? It's the same thing. It's like, if you go to a chess tournament, right? You sign, you sign up, you just sign up. They're going to call your name. You don't have to do anything. You sign up for the chess tournament and then you're put in the spot. You have to put yourself into the spot to do that thing. Whether it's comfortable or uncomfortable, doesn't matter. Put yourself into that spot. You know, surround yourself. In this example, you know, run clubs are huge. You know, surround yourself with people that are like that because you might not have friends that run, but that's the best thing, right? People around you that love to run miles and miles. They're super nice, super amazing community. It's the best thing for you. People that have already done the thing. Imagine you have, you meet somebody in the run club that's like, oh yeah, I've ran three marathons already. Well, maybe that's somebody you want to talk to. Hey, how do I get started in this thing? How do I do this? The opportunities seem to open themselves up once you open yourself up, all right? Thank you guys so much for listening to this. I really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe, follow wherever you're listening to this on, and I will catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much. This has been three ways to stay disciplined long-term.